In this video today, we're going to look at how to recover from a string of losers. Something that's occurred to me at the moment, so I'm going to run through the exact process that I'm going to do to make sure this doesn't do any significant damage to my account. Stay tuned. Hey guys, one welcome to you. All right, so I had a string of losing trades recently, more than I would like probably more than I really should have had. I've made a few mistakes, we'll talk about this in a second. And the main thing for me, listen, this is not uncommon guys, we're always gonna go through strings of losers, but you have to have a process that you employ after the losers so that number one, you make sure that no significant damage is done. Losers is fine if it's giving back some of your month, that's the way it is. What you don't want is to give back massively for the year or anything stupid like that. You know, if you're drawing down on the month or let's say you're drawing off highs for the month, more than you would like, giving back more than you'd like towards the end of the month, which is the case for me coming towards the end of the month. Great month, coming towards the end. A few things that just really shouldn't have happened, a few mistakes made that gave back more than I would have liked. And the important thing for me now is moving into the next month is that I don't continue those errors. I'm happy losing, I'm happy making losers, I'm happy making losing trades because I know over time that will correct itself. But what I want to be very mindful of is that it doesn't actually cause any further significant damage damage to my account or will make me change the way I trade or any of the traps that you can fall into. So imagine it's like you had some losers and they step out and you've got to watch out. There's plenty of kind of landmines around that you can stand on if you let them. The other thing is guys that probably haven't covered, we'll cover it now, is the emotional side of it. If you shrug it off and say, hey, it is what it is. I would rather be back at my highs than I was. I'd rather have not had the losers. Of course, we, we, that's human nature, guys. No one wants to be lower than they were on their account, but it's the having the confidence and the ability to go, well, you know what, is this uh, catastrophic? No. Uh, does it happen often? Yes. Do you recover quickly? Yes. Will you be way back above highs very, very soon? most likely and then thinking of a process-based approach rather than saying hey do you know what um i really want to get that money back because that's easy for traps to fall into guys you know no matter how long you've been trading it's easy to go I wish I was back into that account high. I wish I'd had that PL in my month. Uh, and, 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 you, and you then go into the mode of, we know, of revenge trading and stuff. And this just, just never ends well. So you have to be very centered about it, very focused, and definitely something that I've been aware of and made the mistakes many, many times before of, hey, when you have a string of losers that's enough to annoy you, because there's always a tipping point. There's always some way you go, here's what it is. But when you've had enough that have maybe made you think, oh, I didn't really, quite want to draw down that much still within the parameters of what i'm accepted to do in the month or in the two week period or whatever you've got but you know i've not done something right then you look at the process anyway let's get to the process so the first thing is to examine what went wrong. And for me, I know that I was way too aggressive on many trades. I was pushing a thesis that I had, and I was a little bit early on some of them and a little bit too sized. And so what happened was, and a little bit too correlated on some of them as well. So what happened was I got stopped out of a few of them with the size that perhaps probably should have been a little bit less, maybe should have given them a bit more room, maybe should have been less aggressive with the entry adding, a few different things that added up to basically taking you know, a stop on, a Selection of, of trades, a few are still running, which are which are running now, and I don't think they'll make up for that loss for those ones. But you, you never know. Uh, but I'm sure that later trades will. The point is, uh, for me, and you have to work at what it is for you, but for me it was a bit too, much, bit too aggressive, a bit too much size, a bit too much conviction too soon. I think you've got to be careful you not have token much conviction right in the beginning of the trade. So, okay, once you're in the trade, a little bit more to hold it through the little uh, bumps and troughs, but um, I think you've got to be a bit careful of that. Another thing is no new trades for X days. So then I just go, right, I've got my position, some positions already, which I'm not going to touch. I'm not going to close those. Um, they've got the stop loss in, they've got some targets in, they've got the parameters, the way that I'll adjust them and I know how I'm going to trade them. But what I won't do, or what I haven't done, because I'm filming this now after we've gone through this, I won't be trading um, for a certain period of time, or I didn't trade, should I say, for a certain period of time. And that's the same for you. You should just be very careful that, hey, don't place any more trades for another couple of days, couple of weeks, or whatever it may be. You know, you can decide yourself what you need to do, but that just makes sure that you're not chasing things, you're not revenge trading. The third thing, guys, is review your process. So just to make sure that you haven't done anything you shouldn't have. Is it a mistake um, that you did 
um, that was part that was built into the process or was it a mistake that you did because you overruled something or was it something you missed? So for me, that's like, okay, would you look at my process? Am I trading some things that are a little bit too correlated? I need to look at that in a little bit more detail and make sure that I don't happen to do that again because that's given a bit more exposure than I really want. Um, I think I underestimated the correlation of some of the assets that I was trading and, you know, maybe the aggression and the, because at the time you say, well, I'm willing to risk a little bit more in this trade but in reality you know does that make sense in that position should you wait at least until you've got something cushion and then risk some more of that so again whatever whatever's caused it for you whether it's um, you know whatever trade you're taking doesn't, doesn't even matter the point is just to make sure your process is fine and make sure that uh, you know there's nothing there that's really a, a trap that you've fallen into and you've missed in the process um, and then reducing the size of the next trades this is hard there's no doubt, guys, this is hard because you, you logically think this is going to take me longer to get back. But then as soon as you get out of that mindset, you get out of the mindset of to get back. You know, because if you're thinking that all the time, you'll never want to reduce trades, you'll never want to trade well. You'll just be looking for the next big trade that gets you back to the high watermark on your account. But if you're reducing the size of the next trades, what it does is it takes the pressure off. He says, I'm never going to get it back on the next couple of trades because my size is too low. So then the pressure goes completely. And so what happens is you focus on just making a good trade. You say, right, well, okay, here's a good trade, a small position size on so-and-so, so-and-so, whatever the trade may be. Whatever happens, happens. And then the beauty of that is if it's a winner, you build confidence to come back and increase a little bit more, increase a little bit more, get back in the swing of things. Before you know it, you can back on full steam ahead and this just disappears, which is the goal. Or if you're getting stopped out again, then you're not going to do too much damage and you can dig a little bit deeper and go, maybe I haven't quite fixed it. Maybe I'm just out of sync. Maybe I'm just going, something's happening that needs more attention. This patient is having a cardiac arrest, so to speak, rather than just a graze on the knee. And, and sometimes having that diagnosis helps you when you haven't, because there's nothing worse, guys, than you're taking a drawdown that you didn't want and taking a deeper drawdown because that's multiplying not only the amount of time it's going to take for you to kind of recover those gains, but also the damage to your account, uh, confidence, etc., etc. So reducing that trade, and that's hard. You know, don't get me wrong, guys, it's hard because we all want to kind of undo the error, if we like, and get back. But we've got to rewire the brain and got to keep thinking differently and say, hey, we're not trying to get back. We're just trying to make good trades, good trades, good trades. And then we can start to bring the size up. And before you know it, and it is, and that's the way it is, guys. You, you know yourself, you've done this. Before you know it, you're just literally back above your account high again. Well, there you go. I didn't even realize I was doing it. I was just trading efficiently, effectively, taking some losers, taking some winners, taking some losers, winners, winners, winners. And the process allowed itself to work its way out. And now you back to highs and you look back and go yes that's exactly the way to recover from a drawdown that you didn't like all right number five guys be extra cautious of same errors so if it's an error you've made let's flip right back to um you know me oversizing on some correlated positions just getting a little bit caught out maybe the stop could have been a bit wider there's a few different parameters in there that weren't quite right because actually ultimately the the thesis uh, was sound just a little bit early on the deal, a little bit too much size on the deal. So it could have been a little bit smaller, a little bit wider, or a little bit later. One of those kind of things. But anyway, extra caution the same error. So for me, just be careful. Don't go too aggressive too soon on the position size. When the time's right, fine. But too early, too soon is a little bit of greed there. You're just trying to pressure thro press the throttle a little bit too soon. So watch out for that with your next trades. The final thing, guys, is do not adjust your plan without good reason. It's a trap to fall into that you start adjusting your plan too much. Little tweaks are okay if you've noticed a hole in the plan. But what you don't want to do is, or what I don't, I don't want to do is say, right, well, I'm not going to take this setup anymore, or I'm going to reduce this, or I'm going to increase this. If the plan is sound and you've reviewed it, and you've said, okay, where is it? Review the process, and it looks fine still, but you've just had a little string of losers, then don't start tweaking and adjusting it because you'll always be chasing your tail. You'll be constantly tweaking for this and tweaking for that, and you're constantly trying to uh, tune it in. You know, I guess the analogy is if you're driving, looking right at the bonnet on the, on the road, you're constantly tweaking and adjusting, and it's, uh, you never end a straight line. Whereas if you're driving, you're looking straight ahead, you're naturally relaxed, the wheel's where it is, and you're just gonna be cruising in a straight line. So if you're constantly focused too close on things, you're making all these adjustments, um, and it's very, very difficult and very, very tricky. So don't adjust your plan without good reason. If, of course, you notice a really big hole in it, you think, ah, 
then by all means go back to the drawing board, reassess and replan. So a, five, a six step process guys, there are other things you can do, but I like to kind of stick to this. I don't like to make, to make a big deal out of it. So let's go through the process and go, you know what? It happens, it's gonna happen again and again and again throughout your career. Uh, and, and your job is to not limit losers. Of course, we wanna get the best trades we can do, but it's not to try to eliminate them completely because they're always gonna be there, but it's how we respond to them, how we deal with them and how we stop them causing any more problems is the main thing. Because then if you recover back, you look back and you go, well, you know what? It was a bad two weeks on oh, the last bit of that month. Uh, it didn't really do that much damage because by the end of next month, I was up more and etc. etc. So then you just have, and what, oh, the only thing, the final thing guys, is that you, then you have confidence in your process to recover again if it happens again, which it will do. You, know, you are going to have losers, strings of losers, in future and how you recover from them and how you deal with them is a the difference between longevity in this game or getting wiped out. Take care guys, keep the risk manager. I'll see you in the next one. If you like this kind of stuff, a thumbs up's appreciated. Uh, don't forget to check out our channel sponsor uh, there in the comments section and in the description section below and you can put your comments in the comments section below. Take care, bye bye.